So you guys kind of seem like the, you portray the saner characters on the show. <laughs> are they kind of getting more swept into the insanity and starting to question their own sanity, or are they going to still be the voice of reason, so to speak, up against Norma and Norman? I think you may be more of a voice of reason than I am. I mean, I have my own voice of reason, but you know, I, I do kill a lot of people <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> without due process. <laughs> uh, Dylan we, does as well. Yeah, yeah I, did. I, 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 used to, I used to kill a lot. I used to be yeah. like a real... But, uh, Your kill count's down. I'm, I know, my kill count's a little down this year, and I'm starting to wonder why. Um, Maybe you're right. Maybe they need more sane people. Yeah. I think... Yeah, I think... Uh, I think in this season, though, Dylan seems to kind of start questioning that. Like, sort of, uh, you know, right and wrong, finally. Certainly with, with respect to his own family. Yeah. Yeah, with his mom and, and Norman. Yeah, you're absolutely right, yeah. It used to go along with the plan because he kind of still wanted mom. Yeah. And now you're seeing her for what she is, I guess. Mm -hmm. but without giving too much away. So those rose colored glasses are slipping a little bit. For you, they are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got a, I've got like three pairs of them on. Yeah. What is Romero's feelings for Norma? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, without obviously giving away too much, I think it's safe to say that he's obviously been spit for a while. And she. She is either incapable of going there or resisted it, whatever connection we might have had, because it's it's too vulnerable for her to open herself up. And obviously, he, she has to think about her dynamic with her son, you know. So there's that little thing. Um, so, yeah, I think I think this year, you know, for, if you guys have seen the first two episodes, um, the, the writers came up with an incredible device by which we're sort of forced to be together. Uh, and then we'll see what unfolds. After that, if, if forcing us in a, an unconventional way to, to be together will pave the way for something more emotional. I'd say the look on your face when she says, let's get married the first time, <laughs> it's, it's great. Oh, That's... Uh, thanks. Yeah, I, yeah, it was, it's interesting. I played it, I played it two different ways. And okay. they, they went with that way. I, I gave them an option. I said, well, let's, let's, see, let's, see, let's see if I do it with some dread. But obviously they, they went with a more hopeful uh, version of it. So. Let's see, let's see what, what, what time brings and, you know, and how that relationship, if it does materialize, how it materializes. Yeah. It's kind of cool that you give them both options, too, because it's, really, it's probably going to be one or the other. Yeah, like, yeah, you know? yeah. We don't know which way it's going to go. I didn't yeah. know. So. Yeah. And what about Dylan and Emma, about that relationship progressing this season? Um, you know, we left off in season three with Emma needing a lung transplant and um, sort of obviously their relationship sort of beginning um you know i think uh we're, we're definitely gonna get to dive into that a lot more and kind of explore the relationship um gosh i don't know what i'm allowed to say but uh what happens in the, in the second episode <clears throat> uh well there's definitely there's moments of also i guess yeah in the second episode which you guys have seen now but uh where part of dylan kind of starts questioning also their relationship and sort of where he stands in her life and, you know, does he have a future with her? And, um, like, obviously, Emma's, like, a little bit younger than Dylan, and uh, at this point, her future's, you know, uh, is a little brighter. Um, and so he's kind of questioning, you know, where he stands and, and will there be a future? Um, but I think, you know, at the same time, obviously, there's this sort of, like, connection that the two of them have that uh, uh, is undeniable, so... After the lung transplant, how much of a presence is her illness or, or overcoming that illness going to have on the show? Um, I mean, I think the recovery is going to have, you know, obviously it's going to be a, a, a big piece because it's obviously a, um, like recovering from that kind of surgery is obviously, I don't know, a, a tremendous sort of thing to get over, but... Um, it's, it's definitely going to have an impact. I think it's sort of also, um, they're kind of, you know, because of her new situation, it, it starts to put Dylan and Emma in a, in a, a position of wondering, like, you know, um, if there's other things that they can do now. Like, you know, should other places they can go, other places, you know, they can see, other things they can do. And so, um, you know, while she's, like, obviously recovering, there's obviously also hope now, I guess, you know, because she sort of has been given this um, 
this sort of second chance, maybe. And hope for us that they can escape White Pine Bay <laughs> yeah. before the end. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Well, is Dylan's fate firmly tied to his brother and his um, mother at this point, or is he willing to get out? Um, no, I think, you know, I think part of it is that um, he's obviously tied to them, and, and you know, he sort of has this guilt and uh, all these things that come like attached to his brother basically or him knowing that his brother's basically losing it and I think he really obviously feels sorry for him and he feels sorry for his mom um, but at the same time I think Dylan's also kind of starting to reach a point in his life where he's, he's realizing that he can only do so much and at some point he has to also live his life uh, so I think we get to, we get to see him sort of start to deal with that inner battle that he has to kind of face I think also with Emma in your life now, I think you start to see, you know, yeah. at, at, um, I don't, you know the, at the world in a different way and through totally. the prism of something like maybe there is normalcy out there beyond my family. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a hope for some kind of, even though her situation is not exactly typical, you know, at least emotionally, it's it's a lot more traditional than what you've been dealing with at home. Definitely. So that might. Yeah. And he's finally, so I mean, like finally, like you know, <clears throat> it's like. Yeah, it's it doesn't have the ups and downs and the roller coasters like he's always had with Norma and right. and Norman. Like he's actually sort of has, even though it's um, an emotional one, he has like some sort of stability, which is uh, I think it's like you know it's huge for him. Yeah. Which goes back to your earlier point. You're right. I think I think thank God for at the very least uh, Dylan's you know the, the hope of a, a, a relationship between Dylan and Emma. To give us as viewers, uh, you know, some 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 positive or hopeful outlook within this very complex dynamic, you know. Uh, so I, I think that, and I think that's a great thing that the writers have done, and, and uh, we'll see if that's the case for Romero and Norman. Time will tell. Does Romero think that Norman can be helped? I think. I mean, I think he's seen enough, you know, at dealing with you know a, a mental illness through the prism of a, a, a sheriff. He's seen how how tough a road that is, but I think I think he's also um, you know he's he's colored by his his love for for Norma or, or you know maybe it's you know that that colors the way he views it too. Maybe he wants to believe that he can help him, but I think he I think he does. I think with professional help and perhaps we'll see we'll see what happens. Perhaps with his own personal connection with him, I think he's hopeful that maybe he can he can turn him or I can he can help him in some way. Up until this point, I think. The show has really portrayed Norman as a sympathetic character, but in the first two episodes, we see him as like a very sinister type of figure. Uh, how much does the show lean into that? And Mr. With the episode you're directing, will you get to play around with that at all? Yeah, without giving too much away, I think I think we're going to see definitely transition in Norman this season. I don't think we're saying anything that's not. I mean, you know, we're building up to to the film in essence, or an element of the film. I don't know how close we're going to get to that, but I think certainly in terms of the, the persona of Norman Bates, you know, we're seeing him grow up from, from a young boy, troubled, completely unaware of, of you know, of, of his blackouts, of, of, of his tendency he has, to a young man, and, and who knows, maybe at some point we're going to see him become a, a man, and, and, and we'll see whether it becomes more calculating or not, whether he's now fully aware of what he's capable of or what he has done, and whether or not he starts to manipulate, you know. Um, you know, uh, and also he's incredibly bright. Whether he uses, you know, his smarts to sort of get around things. So that that'll be the the fun part for <laughs> all of us as viewers. When you say manipulate, I think like Norma is the master manipulator. Do you think Romero is aware of the way that he's being manipulated, and he's kind of okay with it because he loves her? Um, I don't think Romero's. Uh, uh, I, I think he knows it that, that she manipulates. I mean, I think. I think his thing with her has always been about trust. It's like, it's just, I know. I, I, I can, he can read through it. Uh, it but all he wants her to do is just trust him. You know, that, that once that barrier is down, she won't have to lie and, you know, do all that stuff. But then again, you know, he's, he's, he's got his own secrets. <laughs> so, you know, and he's, you know, as much of a straight shooter as he thinks he is, he, he really, he hides quite a bit, uh, even from her. So, so they're both, they're control freaks and they're both manipulators. So um, I think that's probably why they're drawn to each other. It's one reason. At this point, how many bodies do they think Norman's actually put in the basement or wherever he might be disposing of? Um, 
Well, without giving anything away. So far, I mean, we, we, have, we, have, we, have, we have to think that the ones that have been calling the question are um, uh, Blair Watson. Absolutely. We know about his father. At least, you know, uh, Romero knows about his father. You know about, uh, about his father. Those are the two that we know for sure. Um, Tracy is the other one from last year. Um, you know, the, the two women who were killed. But we're not sure. But, not, but now we know if it wasn't. Right. It wasn't Norm. We know it wasn't. So the two that we know of definitely are, are the Romero suspects are Blair Watson and, and the father he knows about. Um, and then beyond that, you know, I don't think I can say. <laughs> Max, can you talk a little bit about how Dylan will collide back into Norma and Norman's storyline? Because so far he has sort of been removed uh, with Emma. <clears throat> yeah, I think, um, you know, it. Uh, Basically, at, at one point, and I don't even know how much this time was, but at one point, Norman, he gets a phone call from Norman from inside Pine View. Um, and that's kind of like one of the first moments where he kind of realizes that there's like some bigger issues, you know, like what they talk about on the phone um, sort of sparks something in Dylan to go, okay, like. Things are obviously a mess. Like, I know that I have, like, everything going on with Emma right now, but I have to get back home. I have to get back to my mom and Norman and and figure this out because somebody, somebody's, and neither one of them are, are, are really ever telling Dylan the truth, or at least all of it. Mm -hmm. And so he's kind of, like, trying to figure out who's being, who's really the crazy one here. Um, but that's sort of the beginning of bringing him, him, you know, back drawn into the family. Um, yeah. yeah. There's an event that happens in the first episode that, that triggers a lot of what you go through. I'm not giving too much away. That, uh, that you know, you, it sort of sends you on a journey to investigate, and, you know, including your own brother, you know. Right? Yeah. Does so, that mean we'll start to see um, your characters kind of interact more and maybe compare notes? <laughs> um, I'd love to see that happen. I think it'd be fun. I think I tried last year, but yeah. you, didn't, you didn't bite on my proposal. No. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe you'll join me this year. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, maybe towards. Yes. Yeah, so, so far, our stories, our worlds haven't collided. I, yeah. I only see Max, you know, in between scenes. Yeah. <laughs> so Romero might get to be a father figure yeah. this year. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to give anything away, but uh, you know, we'll, well see. It's, I don't, I, if I'm memory is right, about, I talk about you a lot, but I don't. I don't see <laughs> right. If my memory is right, Romero hasn't seen Norma as Norman as Norma, but Dylan has. Exactly, you have. So I wanted to ask you, what is it like on those days when you're working with Freddie, and he's and he's doing that? Like, how is it for you as an actor? When he's doing his Norma. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a lot of fun. I mean, those for me, like I just I kind of I love doing scenes like that in general, but like I'm the one who gets to do it or you know, or somebody else's, because I think it's just, like, such an interesting thing to sort of play these, you know, obviously, um, sort of, like, different bits, you know, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, I think we, we also, we know Vera and Norma so well at this point to sort of know what some of her um, little quirks are and things that she does. So it was fun. Like, we got to kind of, he and I sat there in the scene, and he's like, what if I do this? What if I do this? <laughs> and then, like, you know, obviously he came, like, with his whole idea. But, um, um. Doesn't he sometimes have Vera uh, tape record lines? So yeah. Can hear her and voice. so he can hear her voice. And then, like, one of the things that I threw in was, like, when he pulls out, like, the, the blackberries, I was like, like, Vera and Norma always say, like, I make, I, I make like a beautiful pie or beautiful this or beautiful right. that. And I was like, you have to call the beautiful blackberry pie. beautiful. Yeah, like, I think it's a, it's a beautiful blackberries. Well, that's, that's actually very Australian. <laughs> is it? They call food beautiful. Really? I'm from Australia. So yeah. I, I, I got a shop and everybody talked about food is beautiful. Yeah. Shops. I don't know. I don't know. Or the British. <laughs> yeah. So that was, you know, it's, it's fun though. It's, um, so far this year, I don't know if I get to see it yet. Um, there's plenty of time, though. We we will get to see it as a viewer, for yeah. sure. Maybe not through our, our characters. Yeah, yeah. We'll sort see. of the fun of this season, and I maybe fun isn't the right word, but seeing Norman trying to twist it back on Norma, all the issues that oh, yeah. he's been having, oh, yeah. and put that on her. Yeah. So talk a little bit about adding that element to the show. Yeah, that was in the second episode. It's one. Of, it's just a very strong episode. Yeah, it's sort of like <laughs> it's so delusional. 
that he actually implicates his mom in all the things that he he's really involved in, um, and he starts piecing it together, and and <laughs> it's just a great it's a great piece of writing, and so beautifully done by both of them. Is that something that we see continued, that he keeps trying to spin this back on Norma and say she's the crazy one? I think you'll see more of it. You'll yeah. definitely see more of it, for sure. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. He's still delusional. I think there may be a light bulb moment, but not for a bit. So there will be yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm giving it away too much. <laughs> <laughs> Romero had a very violent reaction last year when he was compared to his father. Can you oh, talk yeah. about that? And we'll oh, yeah, hear yeah. more about that. Sure, yeah, Bob Harris uh, brought that in out. Yeah, it's something I think, I talked to Kerry about it, uh, his history, and it's, I, I think he, he went into uh, the police force. Uh, he was uh, when it was in the Marines, but went into the police force probably with some idealistic notions of, of justice and doing things a different way in White Pine Bay that his father had done, and then soon fell into the reality of the politics and, you know, and having to work with in the system. And then probably, like, you know, as we talked about, developing his own sense of justice, you know, and, and sort of, you know, being comfortable at least as he could, as much as he could be with his own, you know, with, with his own paradigm of, of morality and justice and being uh, judge, jury, and executioner all in one. I feel like each season we explore a different part of White Pine Bay, you know, yeah. be it the politics or sure. the, the pot farming or, or anything else that's going on. So what part of it are we going to explore this season? Is it going to just be Pine View? Or? Oh, that's a really good question. That is a good question. Um, we do. We do. We see. You know what's great about the season? One of the great things is that we explore mental health. You know, and it, it doesn't sound so cinematic, but it really, the way it's been written, uh, and explore treatment, which I think it, it, it needed to be addressed at some point. At some point, you have to you have to give Norma, or Norma has to realize, okay, I obviously can't let this go on. And so we do, am I giving it all away? We, we do explore that in depth, yeah. and it's beautifully done, yeah. and done, and, and, uh, and, and um, yeah, so that's the and, world we And get. love also. And love is I a, think just love is like an entire theme is totally. Explained. Absolutely. I mean, this is, this is a lot of payoff for what has been set up between relationships, dynamics, um, and also with, with, with respect to Norman's health and mental health. So Do you think a, there's a comment, commentary on the mental health system here? Because, like, the um, county hospital was, like, a very sinister place. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, there's definitely, um, you know, shortages and, you know, the expense um, and the complexity of it. It's, it's you know, and, and there's, you can't categorize any one person in one way, you know, it's, it's complex. So, yeah, they, there's, there's commentary on it and, and how necessary it is. We, we meet Norman's uh, doctor in the first episode, but then I'm guessing later it gets more involved. Do you guys interact with him at all? Is he talking to all of like, the family and everybody? Um, I, I don't personally, but I'm going to get to direct him on Monday. <laughs> oh, okay, good. So I'm looking forward to it. He's there. a tremendous actor, Damon, and uh, yeah, and he's, he's got a, a really pivotal part in the season. He's, he's, he's extraordinary. So, Max, do you interact with him at all? I have not okay. so far, no. Um, I've, I mean, I've, I've been <clears throat> I've been near him, but never interacted. <laughs> <laughs> okay. fast. Yeah. Gotcha. What oh. excites you the most about directing next week? Um, well, we're it's such a gift. Uh, a to get the, the, to get to direct, but also to get to work with the material as an actor. It's just such rich material, and then to try and do it. Justice, you know, as a as a director, it's a, it's a <laughs> it's a little daunting uh, because you want to deliver what what's been written and, and hopefully add something to it. But when you have you know cast like these guys, it's you know it makes it a lot easier. In the writing, when it's so strong, you know, you just you, you, you almost want to let it play and not and not you don't have to mess with it too much. We also have a phenomenal crew, and I've had amazing help from uh, from every, I did last year when I got to direct, and this year. You know, there's new crew members and, and just helping me prepare, especially on the technical end. It's been huge. And someone else is going to write next year. We can talk about that, right? Yeah, but that's not until next year. Yeah, no. <laughs> 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 I just blew that. We're going to worry about yours first. We're going to the word day. But N Nestor, honestly, Dangerous. like, n nobody, and having, you know, all of us kind of been here for, you know, almost four years now, yeah. nobody prepares more and does more homework and um, obsesses in a good way <laughs> over, you know, over the directing and over the episode and over 
everything having to do with this episode of the Nestor. And so it's kind of like this awesome thing because <laughs> he gets a little crazy, but he but it's also it's unreal because he just like no like you just he, your love for like the the show in general and just how much he cares about every single thing, and you like. It, it'll like he, I mean every little tiny detail. And it, so it's awesome. I mean, and, and, and you get to know, you, get, you get to see like like how much not only he loves acting but he loves you know directing as well. And he's yeah, and he's great at it. I mean, like last year's episode showed, and I'm sure this this episode will be will be just as good. But uh, oh, thanks. I mean, it, it's it's a treat, you know. And you're gonna get to do it. And you're yeah. gonna see how it's just a gift. It really, truly is a gift. And it's it's that part is absolutely not lost on me. And and then, but to get to work with ridiculous talent all across the board, um, you know, it's 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 extraordinary. And uh, and also incredibly generous people. Yeah. It's such a giving group. We're, and we do have a great crew too. Our crew is awesome. So and, like, I, and they and and everybody I feel like too in the crew. They all care that everybody cares when, when, when somebody's directing and they're like, hey, huge, you know, huge. Yeah, everyone has ownership of the show. Mm -hmm. You feel it, and and people, have, you know, given up other jobs just to stay on board on this show. Other crew members who we just value and love, and I know I'm speaking to you know people in the office of in pre-production uh, that we all agree it's we're, we're so spoiled. <laughs> we're, it's, we're gonna have a rude awakening when it's all over because it, it just <laughs> it shows don't run like this normally. We get scripts three four months in advance. I mean, that just doesn't happen. And the scripts are so well written and so rich, and everything's layered. And you know, it's a tribute to Carrie and all the writers, and Carlton and all the writers, amazing. So, it's yeah, it's gonna be hard to leave the show. You learn a lot about the actors. You're right when you have to ask them to do something. <laughs> but it's, I mean, it's a very giving group. But yeah, everyone's got a different process. You know, you'll see Freddie's. Freddie will have. Um, Freddie's you know, done a lot of homework, a lot of homework, and so he he comes in extremely prepared with some ideas. Vera will have prepared, but it's sort of more broad strokes and really will rely more on, on a director on the day just to, to guide her. She also has so much material and, and so many big speeches and a lot of it's catch up for her. But hers is a bit more uh, uh, on the spot kind of stuff. Uh, Max, you, you're more like Vera, a little bit more like Vera. Yeah, I'm kind of somewhere in between. Vera's I'm like, like you, yeah. I, like, I'll do the homework, but I don't ever like really commit to something right, to before you. I get there yeah. because. I don't know. I've always just noticed in this industry, like stuff can change the day of, and they come right. in and they hand you eight pages, and they're like, "Here, this is what you're doing." And you're like, yeah. "If I just <laughs> learned these eight pages, <laughs> I'd be so much better." You know? No, it's a and like so for yeah. moments like that, like I'm always like not that I, I have it all prepared, sure, but yeah, yeah. you know, I feel like sometimes if I if I like kind of hammer it into myself, like I'm gonna play it one way. Yeah. Also, you just never know, like, for me, how the, another actor is going to do bring. something, yeah, what they're going to yeah, bring and what they're going to do and how the scene's going to change, and all of a sudden it starts here, and then you end up over here, and you're like, wow, that wasn't how I saw it, but it was actually much better this way. Yeah, we just sort of went with it, yeah. And Beer is like that, too. Beer is like that, totally. She will have prepared a lot, mm -hmm. you know, emotionally, but she will she leaves plenty of wiggle room for, okay, well, the scene's going to go this way, or let's try something, or, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Freddie does too. He just, he just. Uh, I think also part of it is his accent. Mm -hmm. So he wants to, you know, he's got that issue to work on, and he's yeah. so amazing in it. So, and I don't know about Olivia. What's her process? I don't know. I don't know what Olivia's is. Maybe, I mean, she has to work on the accent also. Right. But um, yeah, she's amazing. Yeah, it's a great kind of yeah. <laughs> uh, Max, I remember at this time last year when Nestor was directing. I was talking to you, and I was like, "Would you ever want to direct?" And you were like, "I didn't know we could." <laughs> Now you are. Uh, what was the tipping point? What was the process to getting you an episode? Um, the I mean, I like I'd always like I'd I'd really wanted to direct, um, and it kind of just came about like this off season. Um, Carlton and and Carrie called me and said, hey, you know, um, do you want to direct an episode? And I was like, yeah, I'd love to. And they said, you know, we probably don't have room in, in, in four, but, like, we can make sure that you get to direct in, in season five. And so I was like, awesome. I don't care which episode, whatever. <laughs> Put me in. So it, 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 it's probably also maybe, like, partially a blessing in a way for me, not this year, because I just had 
I have an 11-week-old, and so it's like, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm trying to absorb that as much right. as possible. And, I, and, you know, directing is obviously it's not an easy thing. And it's directing is a vacation stuff. compared to that. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but it requires a lot of work and a lot of preparation. And, you know, I, at this point in time, it's, it's important that I'm home, you know, yeah. as much as possible during this and, you know, or with him as much as possible, which is difficult enough as it is just acting. Being an actor, yeah. So. Now you have a year of graduate. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so then I'll get in and do it next next season and have some sleep. Yeah, I'll have some sleep <laughs> and you know start early and start uh, start shadowing everybody and, and get into it. Just approach the scene from the prism of an, an actor. I write as well a little bit, so but really through uh, the objectives of an actor in each scene, and that's where I, I try and with the help of the crew say, okay, I, this is what the scene's about. This is what each character wants. Um, and then uh, and then I'll I'll come up with a shot list and, and they'll come up with a different one. I go, well, that's so much better. Let's go with that one. <laughs> so uh, so, but but at least uh, through the prism of an actor, yeah, absolutely. It's great though the way that he kind of like brings it is because you know inevitably you end up with like a lot of directors who are pretty just technical directors, and which is which is great. But um, I guess as like an actor, it's also really kind of refreshing in a way and fun to be able to have a director who is an actor and who can relate to you and to the characters and all these things and so I think in a way it's actually it ends up being really helpful because he sees it from from your point of view you know I hope so I, hope so I think that <laughs> no 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 um, I mean yeah there's times when I'm like that's just not how I do it bro <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell you, there were a few moments where they're like and they, they, they were like, oh, dude, you're directing now. It was, there was a bit of a, <laughs> the first scene we did, yeah. like, oh, I got to take notes from you now. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I gave, him, I gave him crap probably the first day, for sure. I was like, well, don't come over here and tell me how to do the scene, buddy. Well, like, you just set up the camera over there and you get your shot. It's just look important in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> now you get to give that satisfaction. Oh, yeah. I see that. I yeah. can't wait. Yeah, I see how that feels. It's interesting. Last last year, at my episode, the episode I got to direct was um, there, there was a lot of activity. There was a big stunt. There was the, a lot of company moves. or moving all over the place. So it was a challenge in that way. It was a sort of more physical show, and 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 a lot happened in that show. It was a lot of movement, action movement, and story plot movement. This was a much more quiet episode, which I love. So now I get a chance to to get a, a sense of what that world is like. And and so uh, and it's uh, not that it's, the other one wasn't as nuanced, but this. You know, they're, they're, it's more about it's more two-handers. A lot of scenes with two people uh, manipulating each other. So I, I'm really looking forward to that. And then, so as an actor, that's the stuff I I gravitate to those scenes. So hopefully, you guys don't screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> because you guys are building towards these two seasons, this season, the next season. Do you feel like there's a sense you're racing towards a big cliff, or is it still that kind of slow burn? Yeah, we don't know where that cliff is for individually for each character, if there is one, or or for the show. So we, we don't know at any point. Honestly, I couldn't tell you what. Uh, we haven't been told that. You know, we've been told some broad strokes, but certainly not individually where any of us land. So you know, a day at a time. I think, I think yeah, and and you know, you kind of. I mean, obviously they have like the idea, but I, then I think there's also pieces that they're yeah. still sort of fine-tuning and finding there's moving parts for sure you know for sure and so I think I don't know yeah that happened to us on Lost I mean there was definitely they had an, uh, the writers Carlton and, and Damon had an idea of certainly where they were going to end it but there are a lot of moving parts in between I, and I think they've always had a notion of how they're going to end it yeah but definitely there's there's pieces that move all the time totally as you guys approach that destination do you get more nervous as you receive your scripts <laughs> you never know. Norman going more downhill. You never know. You never know what's going to happen. You never know what's around the corner. It's, uh, I guess that's what's exciting for us as much as for the viewers, is that they do take big risks on the show, the writers. So, you know, it could be a wonderful day or not so good day for us. We'll see what happens. <laughs> well, do they feel, do your key to your characters feel individually threatened by Norman at this point? I mean, we're starting to see Norma's feeling a little fear towards her son. Do you? Um, <clears throat> I think... You know, I think maybe in the in the beginning I feel a little bit, and then I think maybe I, th I think I, I relax a little bit on that in this season also. I haven't read nine and ten yet, so I'll <laughs> let you know that. But uh, yeah, my interaction with him is, is, is 
fairly minimal in the first two episodes, um, you know, without giving away what, what happens to him. But, um, yeah, I think there's, there's uh, in the back of his head that he feels that there's a threat, certainly to his mother, which can only mean he feels that there's a threat to everybody who's around him. Tonally, it's, it's different. It's a different season. I think there's a lot of manipulation, and certainly from the part of Norman. We're seeing his transformation into the Norman Bates we know from, from Psycho. Um, but also, tonally, what Max said was true. It's, it, there's a lot of love. So this is a moment where the show can breathe and, and give the viewer a bit of a, a respite, and for some, maybe a payoff um, emotionally. And, and so we'll see. We'll see what that brings. Well, not, but also still, well, not... Uh... Well, not losing the no the the, the, the psycho the last, psycho aspect psycho thriller not, yeah. no that's not that's that hasn't gone away <laughs> I think that's too like one of the things that I know like for myself as like a viewer is like you know that I've kind of been waiting for and excited about is just sort of watching um, Norman like essentially lose it more and more yeah. you know and I think uh, and so we're like season four is really like the season where we really start getting there. He's not as innocent anymore.